Hi there, I am Charlie Fairbairn and I am on the Flutterflow team for Pro No Coders. And I'm doing a very short video here that I feel is quite important to anyone who is getting going. I almost feel this should be, in a way, the first video that anyone watches. And it's all about container layout. OK, now I am going to start from scratch here. And you notice that I've got loads of containers going on over here. And I'm going to delete them and I'm going to start again. But I do just want to uh, highlight before I do that why, uh, the properties of what I have created over here very, very quickly. Um, I have created something using the flex uh, capabilities of Flutterflow over here. And we're going to do it from scratch, but it basically says that rather than defining a fixed width for anything or even a percentage, which is slightly different, we're simply going to say that the ratio between, for instance, this container, this container and this container is going to be the ratio of, in this case. Uh, that one is one, this one is one, and uh, this one is two and two. And it's all about the ratios. Now, that will become a little bit more obvious in a second when I actually start from scratch. OK, so we've got here a, um, a blank uh, canvas and we're going to add here um, the first container. And in this particular can uh, container, I think we're going to go for a um, an infinite width on that at a height of uh, 100 percent. And I'm going to put everything in here. Now, we've got to imagine to a certain extent um, what we want to do on this page. And I've made it deliberately so that we've got the scroll bars going there. Um, and I'm imagining, say, that we want to have a, um, a header that goes all the way across the top, maybe a menu that goes down the left side here. And we're going to and then put a certain amount of content into there. So um, what I would put into this container would be a um, uh, I would be putting a column and I'm going to add to that column my first container. And that's going to be there. And I'm just going to for uh, make it a bit quicker on all the all the other ones. I'm going to um, just uh, make that an infinite width because it will be bound by the container above it. And then I'm going to copy it um, three times. Two, three. Actually, I'm going to copy it four times. We've got four of those. Now, what I want to have is a header here, a fairly sort of main body over here. And I want to have uh, this maybe at the same size at the bottom. So what I'm going to do, rather than sort of stretching them out and working out what sizes they should be, I'm going to leave this. And I'm going to say that container is going to take a ratio in the flex. And I'm going to see this over here on the right hand side. I'm going to move it to this uh, orange one. And uh, that's the one I would prefer to use at the moment. I'm going to say that the ratio of that one is going to be one. Um, and it won't really be obvious what's going on until I do the other ones. And the ratio of that one, I'm going to say, is going to be, uh, I'm going to say three. And the ratio of this one, next one down, I'm going to put in as, uh, I've got to click that to allow you to be able to put in the flex value there on the right. And on the final one over here, I'm going to say the flex value of that is going to be a one now what does that actually all add up to it means that this one in terms of the ratio these ones will all be the same because they're all one this one's going to be three times as uh, as uh, as what uh, as high as the other two but the beauty of this one of doing it this way is that we don't need to worry about getting overflows okay so as i stretch this up it doesn't matter how far i stretch it up it'll always be in the ratio of one one three one and if i make it bigger and we're talking about here about the um making this uh totally adaptive and if i come in here it's one three one one we don't necessarily simply have to stop at that in terms of the direction that we can go so on this container here for instance i now might want to make some rows uh, uh sorry columns across here so in this one i'm going to add so we're going to put a row into that uh, here and then I'm to that row I'm going to add a uh, a container uh, so bear with me while I do that we're going to add a container and I can make that container there uh, of an infinite height because it will fill the space that it's supposed to go into so now what I'm going to do is I'm now going to duplicate that four times one oops 
I think I uh, I hit Control Z by ac accident. Let's just make that infinity. This time I'm going to do Control One, One, Two, Three, Four. So we've got four of those. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing over here. Um, so I'm going to say that this one. Actually, I want this one say to be Y just for um, getting the whole principle correct. On this one, say I want this one also to be the same size as that one. And so I'll make that also two. And on the other uh, ones here, I'm going to make this one one. And on this one here, I'm going to make that the flex value over here of one. OK, so now what we've got is we've got a two, a two, a one and a one. And going downwards uh, vertically, if you remember, we've got a one. I think we said this one was going to be a three, a one, and a one. But look what happens when I now uh, stretch this in and stretch this up. Everything stays in proportion, and there are no errors going on here on overflows. This is 100% adaptive, this layout. So I could put a menu at the top here, a menu at the bottom here, and a menu over here, and a menu down the bottom. And it doesn't matter how I stretch this thing, it's always going to stick to the ratios that I gave it. Okay, but I'm not going to stop there. So what I'm suggesting here is is the way to uh, design a page when you're first starting out or a component is that you start like this and you just visualize before you even start what you're going to put into any of these containers. Um, however, let's just go one step further. Imagine, okay, that this one on the width, we've got a, a, a big box here. This one has got the width of two. So it's, remember, it's all about ratios two to one to one. But this one may have um, some menu items in it. This one may have some text description of those menu items. Now, just imagine that you don't have room enough when you come into a mobile phone view to have both of those. So you want to make this one disappear when we get into the smaller viewports. Look how simple this is. You simply want to take the container that it's in, this one here, and you go across here and say on the smaller ones here on the um, responsiveness, I'm going to take that out when it is smaller. And what you're going to see is that on the bigger ones here, I'm going to come here. We've got that, that one and that one and that one. So all four of them going across. I'm going to come in, probably still going to be one, two. Ah, it, no, it's already gone. All right. So the critical point was about here one two three four if i come in a little bit one two three in other words it's become invisible at a certain width a, a certain viewpoint so if i do it to the mobile phone you're going to see we've got one two three uh containers in that particular row over there and if i come out into the mobile uh, sorry the tablet view we've got one two three four so you can create these uh containers to be invisible simply by making them invisible over here you can actually choose them to be i could have made that invisible in the tablet view as well so what decides when we are uh dragging this in uh, at what point this one is going to disappear? At what point does the screen decide that this, at the moment, it's thinking this is in a tablet view? And if I come in a few pixels on that one, one, two, three, four, it's still there. What happens now? One, two, three, it's gone. And the same will work if we were to set it in the uh, in the vertical uh, plane there. If we were to set, for instance, we wanted that one to disappear, that continue to disappear when uh, the height of this got to a certain uh, size. We could also make that one disappear. So if I just come up here, one, two, three, four, uh, the same principle would would apply to that. Now, what decides coming in when we're looking at this design? At what point this container is going to disappear? At what point you say, okay, one two, three, four. At what point, because of the settings of the one in the middle, which was set over here, does it disappear? Well, that is actually set down here in the um, uh, the bottom cog wheel. And it. Uh, I'm sorry, it's not. It's been moved. It's here on the theme settings. This is exactly where it decides what is a mobile, what is a tablet, what is a tablet in landscape, and what is a desktop. So if you wanted to change the... Um, 
uh, the point at which it that container disappears. In other words, your definition of what a mobile view and a tablet view is, that is what you would do here. Now, you have noticed um, clearly that I haven't put anything in these yet, and that's very, very deliberate. I'm basically saying that this is the way you should start on your layout, visualize what your layout should be, and don't worry about so much setting the height of the container. Now, the height of the container and the width of the container, if you use the flex over here, is going to literally replace any numbers that you put over here. This will always be in a ratio of 2 to 2 to 1 to 1 on, uh, this, uh, on uh, these particular containers. Unless, of course, you decide to make one invisible when it gets to a smaller plane, which we can do over there. It is such a simple technique of getting your layout right. And the most wonderful part about it is that you never have to worry about those black and yellow stripes again, because the whole of Flutter and Flutterflow will take care of it for you. I hope this makes sense to you. And I'm reiterating the idea that before you drag one single widget into your um, page, that you sort your containers out first. Um, I learned the hard way on this one. I hope that that is a good, valuable piece of advice. Thank you for listening.